name's David Beatty of Dillachin Sheep uh, here in Balanya County Cavan. We run a farm of purebred clean sheep on 120 acres of reasonably mixed ground. Two years ago I was lambing in a small shed. I could only fit 120 ewes in at the time and I realised there was a good grant there. It was 60% available so I decided to put in an application for a new sheep shed and this is where we are today. I planned it myself. I don't ever accept the steel work. I couldn't make the steel work. That has to be C2 registered. A lot of the concrete work, the sheeting and the, all the penning, I made all the penning myself. The big benefit of the shed is the way I done the penning, I left it that walk through feeders can be hinged back against the wall. So I can have one big long pen on this side and the same on that side. So when I want to run in all my sheep and lambs for various jobs, at least I'm undercover, it's easy enough to get them into the shed and accommodate all the sheep and the lambs. I can fit all the 300 yos in the shed when I've all the 300 sheep and all the lambs. I have to use the centre passage as well. At lambing time, generally what I do is I have all the doubles separate out in one pen. I keep the singles separate and then I have the triplets separate as well. And I try and pen the triplets close to any singles just for wet foster. Well, at the minute, I, the, the shed is accommodation for 300 yos. We lambed 310 this year. We were just pretty much at capacity or slightly above it, but it was, it was grand because once we got a few lambed and out, it was fine. Individual pens, when we're full, we move them next door to a lean two. But once we get 40 or 50 sheep and lambs out, we'll tend to take one pen and set up individual pens in there. The biggest issue, I suppose, is, is trough space for meal feeding. So, so that's re really the reason for the walkthrough feeders and the front uh, trough spaces as well. Uh, it's the best investment I ever made. I can just have a quick look uh, at night on the, yeah. on the phone. And if I need to get up, I get up, but it's definitely a, a worthwhile investment. The only thing that's off standard in the construction is we use the wall panels as the external walls. I suppose it leaves an option if you want to put on a lean-to or extend, you can move the walls out if ever you felt you needed to move. Otherwise, it would have been a 12-inch shuttered wall. You look at the shed and you say it's very high, maybe it's a bit too high, but when it's full of sheep and the doors are closed, you definitely need the, the airspace. But when the weather's rough and there's a cold breeze blowing through, it's very handy to close the door. In the business I'm in, I make and fit sliding doors and I know the cost of them. There's not a huge amount of difference in a good roller door and a sliding door. It's peace of mind. I, I was lambing outdoors and found it lambing outdoors fine. When the weather comes rough and you need to have your yos in, it really is a peace of mind to be able to have them in. And it makes lambing easier as well when you have everything to hand. Try and change rattles on rams, know which ones and when they were coming and you were chopping and changing and you know it was, it made lambing a lot more difficult. There was 80,000 of a spend available on the cap. I had money spent on fencing, on sheep fencing. But the balance put it to good use, I suppose. I couldn't have spent it any better than the shed. Three or four years ago, it was difficult. Um, when I was uh, fighting in the small shed, you weren't really dreaming about uh, extending that stage because prices were bad. But yeah. there's a little more optimism on the horizon now.